Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. Um, maybe I'll down a little bit, Alindra. We've got Alindra at the back again. She is helping to do our live stream this morning. And just before service, I was organizing a, one last thing that I had forgotten that I wanted to get uh, nailed down before church. And I hope as each of you came in, you had a chance to pick out your favorite color and put it in the um, ornament that's in the basket at the back. If you didn't, just you know, slide along your pew there and, and drop in your favorite color pom-pom into our ornament. And also later in the service, you'll have a chance to, to add your color if you would like. Uh, Dave's just going back to shut the door so it'll get even warmer in here as we gather together on this first Sunday of Advent. And as we do each Sunday, I hope you were able to see some of the things that are coming up in our church as we gather. But just before uh, we move into our worship, I will mention a couple of things. So one, after church today, we have our leftover crafts and baking from yesterday's Christmas Bazaar set up in the round room, and you can take a look and see if there's anything that sparks your fancy or that you would like to have in your home to add to your Christmas this year, including just the littlest bit of Christmas baking. So if you <laughs> run out there fast, you might be able to snag something. All, of course, all of that went just like, that yesterday at our sale. Uh, baking is always very popular, as you know. So we've been raising money as the Sunday School and Youth to support mission and service in the United Church of Canada. We set a goal for ourselves of $10,000 this year, and we really want to meet it. And so we are going to be donating from our Sunday School craft uh, and bake table at the Christmas Bazaar directly to mission and service this year from those proceeds so that we can meet our goal at Centennial United Church and we're really excited to be able to help that way. Uh, so, uh, so after church, if you go through these doors over here, you can check out our craft sale and then keep going down the hall and you can join us for coffee and refreshments as well, which have been set up in our CE hall. Uh, so we're hoping that everyone will be able to stay and join us. Why leave when it's raining like it is? Uh, you'll also notice that we have our sanctuary beautifully decorated, so I just want to thank Barb and Nancy for coming in this Friday and putting up all of our Christmas decorations. Uh, we got new candles. <laughs> for the window that we're especially excited about, because I don't know if you noticed, but they just came on. We had a timer set and it worked. <laughs> they came on just in time for worship. We've got a lovely choir here today to lead us in an anthem, and we're just, and all our hymns, we're so thankful for our family, the church family. So also on our craft table, we do have a sign for the outreach and, and uh, social action groups, apple crisps, they're still for sale, we still have some small ones and some large ones. So you can uh, check that out too if you are, have just, you know, a hankering for dessert and we run out of Christmas baking, you can always get apple crisp. Um, okay, yes, so th those are kind of like highlights of our announcements. So the other thing I want to remind people is that next Sunday will be our participation in the Santa Claus Parade and our White Gift Sunday. So at the back, there is a list of items that our white gift, our, our Christmas family children would love to receive this Christmas time, little wish list. If you'd like to purchase an actual gift instead of just giving money, which money is awesome too because we use that to buy gift cards for groceries that, and uh, other items that they can use. Uh, so all gifts are lovingly accepted and if you can put those on the offering plate marked Christmas family, or check off if you plan to purchase an actual gift for our Christmas family. Bring those all at the white gift service and we'll make sure they get where they are supposed to go this Christmas season to share the love that we have in our hearts. Yes, so much is always happening when Advent begins. So I invite you to check out your bulletin and also grab your Christmas newsletter if you didn't pick yours up. Uh, it has everything that we're doing in all of these wonderful life and work of our church. So, 
having said all of that, let us center ourselves for worship and acknowledge this land on which we worship on. We welcome you to worship today, and as we do so, we acknowledge that for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. Centennial United Church is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat peoples and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We seek a renewed relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based on honor and deep respect. And get that outside. We get our winter one going. <laughs> Um, so as we gather, um, each week when we gather, we share our joys and concerns and bring all that we are. So as we begin this time of sharing, I will uh, share one thing that I forgot, uh, a joy and a little bit of a concern. Uh, the joy is that we're going to have a Christmas carol singing festival of song uh, on December 18th at 1.30, followed by Christmas pudding and sauce and ice cream for those who don't love Christmas pudding. Uh, and that, so that's December 18th at 1.30. The concern is that we're having it instead of morning worship. So don't come to church in the morning on December 18th. I'm concerned that there'll be just hordes of people showing up on the, in the morning for worship. Uh, only to be told to come back in a few hours for our hymn sing. So um, th that is how I'll start our time of sharing. Are there others that would like to share share that what's on their heart today as they come to worship that we can keep in our hearts as we worship together as the family of God? I think I'm keeping in mind uh, Jim and Alice's brother and his battle with cancer. We know there are others in our congregation who are battling cancer and who have other illnesses. We keep them in our hearts today. I'm mindful of the crisis in Ukraine that has been made worse by cold weather and lack of power. Sometimes it is hard to hope amidst all of that is wrong in our world. And yet we come this first Sunday of Advent and we light our Advent candle of hope. And I'm going to ask Hannah and Mila to come and light the Advent candles and share with us the Advent liturgy that you can find printed in your bulletin or on the screen. I'm going to share this with them so you can hear it. Come, let us go to the mount, to the house of God so that we can be taught God's way and go on God's path. What do you hope for in the new world? I hope for a future that is more amazing than anything I could ever imagine. I hope for the healing of creation. I hope for good mental health and wellness. I hope for a world where everyone seeks the good. Advent is the beginning of this new world, a better world, where we can dare to hope boldly. May it be so. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
so let us pray. The earth has turned once more, Creator God. The season of hope, peace, joy, and love returns as a reminder of how we should live the whole year through. You have called us to be your people, asking us to take your light out into the world. Help us in our times of worship throughout this season of Advent to find the words to share the message of hope, peace, joy, and love. Show us how to be fully aware of your presence so that we might share your presence with others. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray with you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, as the faithful, let us come. Number 60 in Voices United, we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
So, uh, would the young and the young at heart like to join me at the front? And on your way up, can you go back and grab the um, pom poms and Christmas ornament at the back? Should be back there somewhere. We've got a time for wondering. Great. You want to come up right first? And 
we work together to, and we have all these different colors inside of us. The church is like this wall. So let's, yeah, let's fill it up. Show it, can you help me? You guys fill that up? In the Bible, in one of, our, in one of the scriptures we're going to read today, it says to, to put on light. To get us all clothed in light so that we can be like the rainbow, reflect all these different colors into the world. So I like to think of it as that our church is like a, a drop of rain and God is like the sun. And when God signs, shines through the church, it reflects, reflects all the different colors that are inside the church. And we're all those different colors. We're the rainbow. Isn't that neat? And so we're all united together, and we all, with our different colors, live out in the world and make the world a more beautiful, colorful, loving, welcoming, joyful, hope-filled place. And when we hang this ornament on our Christmas tree here at the front of our sanctuary this year, it's going to help us remember just that. Won't it help us remember? Good work. Yeah, get a cut. Look at how many can Neil get in at the same time. <laughs> She's making a mess up here. Now, oh, there we go. So what do you think? Do you think this will make a nice addition for our Christmas tree this year? All of us, all the different colors of the rainbow. Let's hold it up for everybody to see. Do you think it has room for a few more? Oh, you do? Okay, well, get it. I hate for it. And is it missing any? Does it, does it look like it's got everything? Because we had everything in there when we started. You think it's a little bit light on the pink side? Put a little bit more pink in? Yeah. How's that, how's that looking? It looks amazing. It looks amazing, just like all of us look amazing. And when we come together, we are a beautiful creation. Look at that. Do you want to find a spot to hang it on the Christmas tree right here? I can put it up Can you? All right, put it up as high as you can. That looks wonderful. Can everybody see it? No, no, no. Well, oh, and the choir. We didn't even get the, I was going to take you back. The choir. Let's oh, wait. You know what? Let's take it off. Make sure we get the choir's favorite colors in. Oh, my goodness. There you are. Well, yeah. Pick out your favorite color. Got to get them into the, got to get everybody in there. Right? I'll collect them up. Oh, we got blue. We got red. We've got purple, we've got some more red, love it, love it, love it, love it, what have we got? Ruth has green, another green, a blue, a pink, an orange, this is so wonderful, I mean, not a bunch of them. Yeah, you're like me. All the colors of the rainbow. All the colors. We got some burgundy. What do you want? What do you want? Yellow. There it is. And yellow. There we go. Now, can all of these fit in right here? I don't mean to be a bummer here, but... <laughs>
Trinity gets closer and closer. See if you can find, after church today, Mary and Joseph and the wise ones, and Joseph and Mary's donkey, as they make their way up to Jerusalem. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Always do that one. All right. You're going to head off to Sunday school. We're going to sing about the house we are building where all are welcome and we are all the colors enjoyed and loved. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem is built as a city bound firmly together. There the tribes go up, the tribes of God, to give thanks to the name of God, as was decreed for Israel. There the thrones of justice stand, the thrones of David's house. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May there be peace within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my kin and friends, I say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of our God, I will seek your good. And from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, and the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. May God bless these readings to our memory and to our understanding. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. All week long, I have been thinking about the images from Isaiah and our psalm. The idea that in the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills, and all the nations shall stream to it. Two things stood out for me. The first was that the Lord's house we are streaming to is established as the highest of the mountains. The very highest. Raised above the hills. And as we embark yet again on this Advent journey of watching and waiting for the coming of the Christ child and the time when God's hope, peace, joy, and love will be fully realized and lived out in our world, I am fully aware of how far we still are from reaching our goal, the top of the mountain, God's house of justice where peace is fully realized. This week, I kept running into reminders of what a difficult climb we are on as we try to reach the summit. On Tuesday, it was at the final webinar of the 40 Days of Engagement on Anti-Racism series, where the committee for Then Let Us Sing, our new music resource that will digitize Voices United and more voices and provide us with even more music to worship our God, shared their discussions around the racism found in our Advent hymns and Christmas carols. And like many of you, I'm sure, I wanted to just stop thinking about the implications of light as good and dark as bad symbolism and just sing the hymns because they remind me of my childhood or because the notes of the music are beautiful. And instead, if I'm going to be faithful to my work of becoming anti-racist myself, I have to keep looking and wondering and asking questions and slogging through, thinking about what music we will sing. That doesn't make me cringe because I know the connotations. Because that's the only way to make it to the top of that mountain step by painful step. And it is painful. Sometimes even getting out of the bed in the morning is insurmountable. Picking hymns for this week made me want to cry. It is painful. 
to put my knitted nativity made by my grandmother in love for me out and know that their whiteness is not only historically inaccurate, if I don't acknowledge the implicit racism in the pattern and my grandma's choice to use these colors of yarn, then I'm losing my footing on my path up the mountain towards anti-racism. Something that was made painfully clear to me on my first Christmas Eve here when the family of Dr. Bill Ives pointed it out after the Christmas Eve service with their eyebrows raised. It's a pretty white nativity you got going on there. Certain realizations we might have as we do this work will feel as though we are caught up in an avalanche and being swept beyond our control right back down into the deepest valley, where we have to dig ourselves out before we can even start to make our way back up to God's holy house. It is painful. Because that's not the only issue, that's just one issue. You only have to tune into the news to be confronted with all the boulders that block our way to that place of justice where swords are beaten into plowshares, wars, political unrest, gun violence, climate crisis, all need to be overcome. It is painful. There are all these little rocky things that cause us to slip and slide back down, fights with our children, frustrating encounters with strangers, daily hurts self-esteem issues, health problems. Will we ever reach the mountain top? Will we ever stand at the gate of God's house? That brings me to the second thing that stood out for me in the readings this week. And that is the image of us all streaming together to the Lord's house. The hope-filled idea that at the top of that mountain we will all be together and there will be a huge celebration, which this time of year I imagine will be a lot like our women's Christmas lunch that we're having next week. And pretty much every other festive dinner and holiday celebration you can think of from the stain of Christmas tree lighting, to the Santa Claus parade, to the community Christmas concert at Jubilee Presbyterian Church next, on December 11th. That is what I imagine our party at the mountaintop will be like, only a hundredfold. With Christmas crackers of tinsel and gifts of love and grace, peace and joy and food and drink for everyone. <coughs> Just having that image of that celebration that awaits us can be enough to keep me going on some of our hardest slogging days. And when it's not, those are the days that we can lean on all the other people who are on this journey with us. I saw this week what was probably one of the last flocks of geese flying south for the winter pass overhead as I drove Colin to his co-op placement at the Y in Sega Beach. Every time I see a flock of geese, I'm reminded of the talk our former Saskatchewan Premier, United Church Minister, Chancellor of St. Andrew's College in Saskatoon, Lauren Calvert, gave to Saskatchewan Conference years ago. He talked about geese and how as they flew south, they communicated through honks and who knows what else to let each other know when the goose in the lead needed someone else to take over that hardest position so they could draft into place behind and regain their strength. Following the lead of these brilliant geese is how the entire flock of us streaming to the top of God's holy mountain have a hope of making it. Sometimes we have to rest and let others do the hard work for a bit. As I look out at all of you today, and back at all of you today, I think of the Sunday School Mission table set up in the other room. I remember the work of the Outreach and Social Action Committee. 
I recall our pledge to support MS work in the church. And I'm encouraged yet again to keep on climbing. What is it that inspires you to keep climbing when the way is steep and the footing hazardous and the going tough? Where do you find hope as you work <coughs> and wait? Sheldon Cooper said, while accepting his Nobel Prize on the series finale of Big Bang Theory, I have been encouraged, sustained, inspired, and tolerated by the greatest group of friends anyone could have. This is exactly what each and every one of us needs as we are going to, if we're going to make it to the mountaintop, as we try to make it to the mountaintop. Given the encouragement, sustenance, inspiration, and tolerance of this united church of ours, how can we have anything but unbridled hope that we will get there somehow, someday? And until then, we watch and we work and we wait as the children of God. Although it's not going to be officially released until this Thursday, I thought we might draw a little more encouragement today from our new moderator, Carmen Lounsdown, in the United Church of Canada, and her Christmas message to the church. So I've got it on the PowerPoint. Alindra, if you would like to share her words for us. My church family, Christmas greetings to you in the name of the one who came to us as the Word made flesh, in the form of a baby born into lowly and humble beginnings. We recite through the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's cryptic at best, but there's a reason we read the Gospels alongside the Hebrew Scriptures. Listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, and who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, and together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people, and he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. We often associate the prophetic texts with dire warnings against our human fallibility and our worst individual and corporate character defects. But in this case, Isaiah is preaching a good news story, one of beauty, peace, good news, joy, comfort, redemption, vulnerability, and salvation. What could be a better news story in the arrival of the Christ child than remembering all that good news promised to us through our faith? Not that we get to those things because of our faith, just that our faith reminds us every year in the remembering of the coming of the Christ child that all things are made new or possible again, that God wishes us to have life and to have it in abundance. Sometimes it's hard to remember with the constant assault of bad news stories meant to keep us in a state of perpetual stress and believing the worst in each other. When in fact, all empirical evidence points to the opposite. Humans are generally decent and committed to the fabric of our societies and our social contracts with each other. That we are capable of great feats of innovation, kindness, overcoming obstacles, and achieving the impossible. We were born to achieve the impossible. And not only in the absence of crisis, 
but even more strongly in times of crisis. So this year, when so much seems uncertain and the news amplifies all the hard news stories, remember that when the word is made flesh, there is one who came to show us that all the ends of the earth should see the salvation of God, and that through that one, we are capable of coming together to achieve the impossible. From the office of the moderator and on behalf of the United Church of Canada, I wish you the very merriest and most inspirational of Christmases. May you be the good news and see the good news and share the good news this Christmas season. All earth is waiting to see the promised one, and so we continue the climb. Let us sing number five in, voice, more voice, in Voices United, All Earth is Waiting, verses one, three, and four. Giving 
Tuesday this week. This Tuesday is Giving Tuesday. Uh, we invite you to consider giving a gift through mission and service, through the church, through Gifts with Vision. Uh, on Giving Tuesday, there is a special link that you can use if you would like to donate to the emergency response efforts that happen whenever there is emergency through the United Church of Canada's Mission and Service Fund. So I invite you to check out that link and to know that our gifts are used together to support all of the work of the climb. Let us pray. God of love, bless all that we offer in all the ways that we give of ourselves, our time, our energy, our thoughts, our learning, our wisdom, our hard work to climb closer to that place of justice and peace for all, where hope, peace, joy, and love are fully realized in our world. Use all the gifts that we offer to support this work and to help us to reach the mountaintop and that great party that awaits. Amen. So the choir is going to sing for us now of uh, this road we're on. <coughs> Walking on the heaven road.
for Sunday off. So we give you thanks, June, because we weren't able to do our anthem last week. For our prayers of the people today, I thought I would do something a little bit different again, too. Um, there is a song that was created by Advent Unwrapped for the Advent Candle Lighting Liturgy. And instead today, I felt called to use it as our prayers of the people. So I invite you, as we listen to this song, and hear the words and see the words and look at these beautiful images that are shared as part of this Advent song of hope. I invite you to think of those in your life that need to hear this song, that are in need of this word of hope and these images uh, that Advent brings. So that's going to be our prayer today. This sharing all those prayers of our hearts as we watch this video and listen to this song. said let us go to the house of the giver of hope the grantor of justice the days are coming fulfillment of promises truth restoration with anticipation we wait wait for god's mercy to fill this place and the giver the giver brings hope for a future and peace like a river and joy everlasting and love the giver of love come dwell with us now all these things abound i was glad when they said let us go to the house of the giver of hope the grantor of justice the days are coming fulfillment of promises truth restoration anticipation we wait wait for god's mercy to fill now the giver brings hope for a future and peace like a the giver brings joy everlasting and love the giver brings hope the giver brings joy everlasting and love the giver brings hope for a future and peace like a river joy The giver of love, come dwell with us now, all these things abound. Come, oh come, Emmanuel. Come, oh come, Emmanuel.
So let us join our voices in song with the words we would sing when we reach the top of that mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Of the Holy Spirit with us always on our journey. 